Sunbelt Hoops tips off. We got road wins. We got a big upset. And South Alabama loses, but may have dodged a bullet. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game uh, starts. Uh, sorry, I didn't have an episode uh, yesterday. Fell ill right after I talked to Zach Blackaby. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, uh, but feeling uh, much better today uh, and happy to give uh, another episode of the podcast before. Uh, the weekend. We do have a little football news in there as well. One of the big uh, recruits, I'm sorry, one of the big transfers out of the Sun Belt has found a home, a uh, very familiar home, I guess one would say. Uh, but let's talk about a Sun Belt basketball uh, as uh, it kicked off uh, tonight. We did have a major upset. With, I don't know if, if we're, are we counting major? I'm going to count major as based on records because the Cajuns had two losses uh, coming into. Uh, tonight's action and uh, again I'm a big believer you went on the road it's a nice win all right uh, and it's tough to do but nonetheless the Cajuns had all of two losses one of them was to Texas and we got a little slow internet trying to get the second loss here uh, but they go on the road and they lose to Coastal Carolina Coastal Carolina was six and five coming into the ball game the Cajuns had a 10 point lead with five minutes to go. They led about well, nine point lead. Well, no, they, I thought it was a 10 point lead. Yeah, with four minutes to go, 440 to go, Terrence Lewis, Terrence Lewis completes a three point play and it's 69 59. But Coastal Carolina then reels off seven straight points, makes it a ball game. A couple of foolish fouls by uh, Louisiana and Coastal Carolina ends up tying the game, and they hit a free throw at the end. Uh, After they missed a shot, they were fouled on the rebound. And Coastal Carolina comes away with an improbable uh, 77-76 to victory over, you know, the favored Cajuns. Only three and a half on the road. Uh, But their other loss was to Drake, and Drake's pretty good. So... You know, the Cajuns only have a couple of losses this year. I'm trying to get Drake's uh, record here. Drake is a 10-3 and three overall. They were undefeated at the time they beat uh, the Cajuns. Uh, so the Cajuns only have losses to uh, Drake in Texas, uh, and they start out the Sun Belt 0-1. That is a big win for Cliff Ellis and uh, the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. They were off to... What would not be considered a fast start? Again, six and five this season up until this win. They're now seven and five and one and zero oh in the Sun Belt. Of course, that's all that really matters. This is never a a two bid league for the most part. It is always the winner of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament, and you want seedings uh, for that. Uh, they came in with a loss against Charleston. They had a win over Regent in South Dakota. They lost to Wofford. They beat uh, Winthrop. Lost to UNC Wilmington. And beat South Dakota. They had a couple of losses to uh, South Carolina, upstate Missouri. A big win over a lesser foe in St. Methodist, and they beat St. Mary's of uh, Maryland. So, again, two wins, two losses, a win, loss, win, loss, two wins, a loss, and a win. So, very, um, well, 500-ish, as you can see, uh, Coastal Carolina was against, uh, well, so far this season, and they come up with a huge home win, uh, 77-76 against, uh, the Cajuns, uh, let's see here, uh, Brown for the Cajuns, 25 points, nine rebounds, Jordan Brown, 6'11", 225 pounder. Uh, and then, uh, Lewis who had that, uh, three point play that I was telling you about 19 points uh, and 10 uh, rebounds for a uh, coastal off of the bench, 28 points for Jamaru Brown. My goodness. Nine of 13 shooting made all nine of his free throws. Uh, and uh, he had 28 points, only one of one from three. So he's taken a lot of twos. 
Now, the difference in the ball game is Coastal Carolina 19 to 24 from the free throw line. The Cajuns shot well from the free throw line, 11 out of 22. I'm sorry, 11 out of 12, but only went 12 times, made 11 out of them. And so, you know, Coastal Carolina went to the line 100% more times than the Cajuns did, uh, and they made uh, eight more free throws. Really, the difference in the game. Neither team shot all that well from three. I tell you, the Cajuns didn't shoot well at all. They only shot 40% from the floor, 41.7%, uh, 30 out of 72, 5 out of 22 uh, from threes. Uh, but a tough loss for the Cajuns to begin uh, the, uh, the Sun Belt Conference uh, schedule. Whereas, again, Coastal Carolina off to a very, very nice start. Uh, kind of a come-from-ahead victory. Um, it was an odd ball game because I think they were leading most of the second half, most of the first half. They had a lead at halftime. And then midway through the second half, the Cajuns kind of took control all the way from being down by five and a half to leading by 10, only to see Coastal Carolina come back in the last uh, 10 minutes of the ball game to uh, uh, win the, uh, the ball game uh, at home. Uh, another big, let's see here, Marshall with a nice win. They stay hot. They improved to uh, 12 and 2, 1 and 0 oh in the Sun Belt. A rather easy 79 to 53 win over uh, App State. Good job by uh, Marshall. Marshall, Coast, uh, Marshall, Southern Miss, and uh, the Cajuns all off to uh, tremendous starts. Four, to, in fact, five players off of Marshall in double figures. No one with more than 15 points, but two guys with 15, one with 14, one with 11, and one off the bench with 10. So very balanced uh, for Marshall. They had seven guys playing double digits in uh, minutes, uh, shot, shooting 52% from the floor, uh, and uh, very efficient, uh, meanwhile holding App State to just 34%. Uh, and so a nice win for Marshall uh, at home uh, to defeat uh, App State. Southern Miss ekes by Troy, 64-60. Troy gives Southern Miss a, a run for their money. Southern Miss improves to 12-2. and two. They are, well, Everybody's 1-0 and 0 or 0-1 or 0 in the Sun Belt. Uh, but Southern Miss with a nice win at home. Four of their five starters do get double of figures. They also didn't shoot very well from the floor, 40%. Shot 73% from the free throw line. But they also held Troy to shooting... Uh, to, to 34% rebounding wise, basically even 42, uh, 36 turnovers, basically even uh, as well. So Southern Miss with a big win to begin the college basketball uh, season. All right, let's take a time out. South Alabama on the road, uh, doing the Georgia two-step, if you will. They lost, but they may have dodged a bullet. We'll tell you about that next. As we need to warn you, you're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. We've all been there. A few becomes a few too many. And as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think about calling for a ride, which you know would be a good idea. But nah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. That's not great. You lose your job. That's even worse. You towed your car. Not great. Or the worst thing. You kill somebody. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. All right, we continue with Locked On Sun Belt. The uh, Sun Belt Conference uh, tipped off on Thursday with the basketball. And before we get to uh, the, uh, the South Alabama situation, how about Ewell Monroe? Goes on the road, on the road. I don't think they'd won a road game this year and beats Texas State 57-53. Monroe off to a brutal 4-9 and nine start. But Keith Richard's kids uh, get the job done in San Marcos. Texas State struggling so far this year with seven and six, now seven and seven. That's a huge win for the Warhawks. They improved to five and nine overall, and they'll tell you starting one and oh in the Sun Belt. 
because they're really that you got some out you got some um i mentioned the cajuns southern miss and marshall at the top everyone else is kind of in the middle you know a few games under 500 or or a few games over 500 or 500 and then you have ulm at the bottom like four and nine but now they're five and nine and that is a huge win for uh the warhawks all right south alabama has played most of their ball games on the road. So going to Georgia Southern uh, should not be that intimidating, but it was all really Georgia Southern. Uh, this game was uh, 12 to 11 and Georgia, uh, Georgia Southern up by one and Georgia Southern went on a 17 to three run. So seven, uh, 12 to 11, 17 to three run 29 to 14 is what Georgia Southern lead. South Alabama actually cut the lead a couple of times. They were actually, Let's see here. They had a chance to cut it. They were down 41-33 uh, in the second half and had the ball. And then all of a sudden, it's 49-35. So they were down by eight, had a chance to cut it to less than that. Uh, and then a few minutes later, they're down by 14, and that's what they lost by, 64-50. Uh, Georgia Southern with the win, 8-6. and six. South Alabama, 6-7. and seven. South Alabama's going to have to find somebody else other than uh, Isaiah Moore, uh, his shot was not quite falling tonight. Uh, did have 15 points and five assists. Uh, the three-point shooting was bad, five of 22. It was nice to see uh, Owen White sink a few. I think he sank his first three shots before missing his last two. He's been really cold uh, this year. Maybe feed him a, a little bit more uh, if he's three or five from three. He had 11 points. I'd like to see Kevin Samuel be a little bit more physical underneath. Uh, he was shooting while being double teamed and then uh, kicking it out on offensive rebounds when he probably should be shooting. He only had three points and seven rebounds. I'd like to see him be a little bit tougher uh, underneath for uh, South Alabama. But South Alabama is going to have to find, you know, more scores than uh, than more. Turbo Jones had 14 and White had 11, uh, but they got to do a better job than that. They, I mean, they shot less than 30%. They're missing layups. Um, a great Greg Parham was one of 12 from the floor. That's just not going to get it done. Oh, and five from uh, three. Uh, uh, Judah Brown back in uh, the lineup. Oh, four from three. And uh, Javon Franklin uh, only played a couple of minutes in the ball game, did not make a shot. So they need somebody else besides uh, Isaiah Moore, who's going to make some shots. And if Isaiah Moore is struggling, which he did tonight, usually his shots near the bu bucket go in, did not attempt a three-pointer, six to 17. And again, most of those are layups or, um, floaters, uh, but the bullet that they may have dodged uh, about five minutes to go in the ball game, more slipped in the lane while trying to attempt a pass uh, and couldn't get a great view of it, but he uh, looked like he was in a little bit of pain. We'll find out more either on Friday or later on in the week. We'll see if he plays against Georgia State on Saturday, but uh, it didn't look good when we when the play happened. But Isaiah Moore ended up, looked like he was just sitting on the bench waiting for the game to end compared to getting any kind of treatment or was in any significant kind of pain. You know, sometimes you slip and, you know, you feel something pull and, you know, you feel the, season's just go the season is gone uh, and that's not the case. So it appears, again, first look, that Isaiah Moore was seriously injured and then it, he wasn't. So hopefully that is the case for South Alabama because, I mean, I think it's going to be a long season for South Alabama anyways. It'll be longer without Isaiah Moore uh, in uh, the lineup. He is the whole – he's not only the engine that makes it go. He is the whole automobile for uh, South Alabama. Uh, if they can't get Kevin Samuel going, um, you know, the big seven-footer, only three points, uh, only one of five shooting. And, again, he's not shooting anything further away than uh, – than two or three uh, feet. So that's the bullet that was dodged earlier tonight. Quickly, let's go over the rest of the scores from uh, Thursday night. Uh, Arkansas State goes on the road and beats Old Dominion. Nice win for the Red Wolves, 60 to 57. James Madison off to a good start, 10 and four now with a rather easy win over Georgia State in Atlanta, 63 47. Uh, and we told you the rest of the scores. Georgia Southern over South Alabama, 64-50. Uh, UL Monroe with a huge road victory over Texas State, 57-53. Uh, Coastal Carolina with a home win over the Cajuns. 
Again, a kind of a come from ahead victory, but again, they were down by 10 in the second half, late in the second half at that. And they reel off a 77 76 victory. Marshall 79 53 over App State and Southern Miss beats Troy 64 to 60. Of course, Saturday they will play again. We'll recap those games on Monday. All right, let's take a timeout. And when we do, one of the big transfers in the Sun Belt uh, has found a new home. Uh, leaving uh, the Sun Belt, but going to go play with family. All right, meanwhile, would really appreciate if you guys would take the time to subscribe to the podcast, either on YouTube, just search Locked On Sun Belt, and you can find the podcast. Uh, we got a handful of subscribers, just been doing video here for a little bit, but we'll continue to do uh, baseball, probably even a little bit of softball, since I know that is big in, uh, in the Sun Belt. So basketball for now, uh, we'll continue to follow football, uh, you got the signing day still coming up in February. Uh, you got the spring ball, uh, but we'll, you know, kind of focus here on basketball for a bit. And then, I mean, softball starts, you know, in about six weeks or so, right? In the middle of February, then baseball. And we all know uh, how big Sunbelt baseball is. And now you're adding a team like uh, Southern Miss, who was the NCAA tournament uh, last year, and hosted a Super Regional, right? They did host a Super Regional, something along those lines. So, uh, Please subscribe, and also you can find, uh, you know, the Sun Belt uh, podcast wherever you find your podcast. Just again, uh, please search "Locked On Sun Belt." All right, uh, we do appreciate you. Also, if you see it on Facebook or Twitter, please like and share uh, as well. That is a big help to uh, the podcast. All right. Meanwhile, one of the big, if not the biggest, transfer uh, coming out of the. Uh, portal or going into the portal and out of the Sun Belt is Tez Johnson, wide receiver from uh, Troy. Two seasons of eligibility remaining, uh, led the Trojans with 56 catches and 863 yards and four touchdowns. In 36 ball games, 141 receptions, uh, 1,800 yards and eight touchdowns. The thing is, Troy is not a big passing offense. They're just not, right? If Gunnar Watson is the quarterback, uh, he can be efficient, uh, he can be inefficient, but in today's college football game, Troy is the antithesis of that. We're going to run the football and play defense, and they won the Sun Belt Championship and won a bowl game, the Cure Bowl, uh, and so it works for them up until they get the kind of quarterback that can maybe spread it around a little bit more explosively than Gunnar Watson. So what does Tess Johnson do? Tess Johnson goes into the transfer portal, and who does he hook up with but his brother, Bo Nix. Tess Johnson was adopted into the Nix family. Bo, I think last week, decided uh, he was going to go back to college uh, and go back for his uh, fifth year. He's got an extra year, right, because of COVID. Uh, and because of that, Tess Johnson has now transferred to Oregon. So pretty neat story there. Uh, I'm pretty sure Bo Nix was being, you know, talked to to the Senior Bowl, seeing if he wanted to play here, if he was going to opt out. Oregon uh, and Dan Lanning trying to convince him to come back. I think Bo Nix is going to be right up there for the Heisman Trophy next year. You do have Drake May, and, of course, you have the Heisman Trophy winner coming back, Caleb Williams. But as Bryce Young found out, it is very difficult to repeat as your Heisman Trophy winner. And if Bo Nix can get off to a little bit better of a start than he did this year, like against Georgia, and kind of was under the radar for most of the season up until everyone realized, oh, their only loss is for a long time against Georgia. Uh, we'll see. Because Bo Nix is going to get a lot of pub because there just aren't too many five-year college starting quarterbacks. He's going to have started his whole career, barring any games uh, that he was injured in. Uh, and he'll have his second year under Dan Lanning, although Kenny Dillingham is now at Arizona State. The offensive coordinator for Oregon went to become the head coach uh, at Arizona State. So is Bo Nix really going to be – Bo Nix is going to have his fifth offensive coordinator in five years. That's hilarious. Uh, and not really, but that's going to be the case. Uh, I'm sure they'll try and run the same sort of offense that they had this year, uh, and Bo Nix will – probably be more comfortable in it. And I think Bo Nix has taken the next level. He's taken the next step. And we'll see if he is in the Senior Bowl in 2024. So the big news, uh, Tez Johnson, Troy's wide receiver, into the portal, 
Uh, they had him. I think on three had him like uh, Oregon State or no, uh, Oklahoma State or Penn State. And he ends up going uh, to o Oregon to be with his adopted brother, uh, Bo Nick. So a little bit of a nice story there. Wouldn't be surprised if Johnson got a little, you know, NIL deal out of Nike or whomever out there uh, in Eugene. So uh, good for uh, him. All right. Thanks very much for tuning in to another edition of a locked on a uh, Sunbelt. Please have a happy new year. Please stay safe. Do not drink and drive, get a ride, walk, whatever it is, be safe on a new year's. We will have a, I'll have a new year's edition of a uh, locked on a uh, Sunbelt. We will do one heading to the sugar bowl, which has nothing to do with locked on Sunbelt, but heading to uh, the sugar bowl uh, in new Orleans. And we'll see Alabama uh, and Kansas state play. Maybe even the Pelicans are playing the Sixers on Friday night. May even get a chance uh, to see that. But we will have an episode on January 1st uh, recapping uh, the Saturday action. And if anybody else goes into the portal. So we'll recap the uh, Saturday basketball action uh, and uh, keep you updated if anyone uh, commits. We, we seem to be getting more commits. And we may be getting more uh, people into the portal now that uh, teams have played their bowl game. So we shall see. Uh, how that goes. Again, please be safe. Have a wonderful new year. We will see you in 2023. I'm your host, Dave Schultz, and you've been listening to Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day.